Texas. And in early life, he had studied philosophy, theology, and religious studies in Cuba, Mexico, and the United States, and I'm sure that's going to be subjected to this talk. Leo has worked for the Historic Preservation Division of the Department of State in Tallahassee, in charge of coordinating and managing educational programs in the state of Florida, folk life programs <coughs> in the state of Florida history. He's also conducted extensive research on the topic of today's uh, lecture <coughs> at various places, such as the Archivo General de Nación in Mexico City, the Biblioteca Nacional in Santiago de Chile, the Archivo de Indias in Seville, and several um, archbishop bishoprics and, and convents and parishes archives in Havana, the Florida Department of State Archives, and elsewhere in the US, Mexico, Chile, Spain, and Cuba. So they really have been looking at everything you uh, wanted to know about uh, sex in Cuba <laughs> in the 17th century. He also had extensive experience conducting field work, collecting oral and written history, and has presented his findings in both academic and non-academic settings. And one particular aspect of this uh, CV that I want to highlight is the fact that he uh, has mastered uh, paleography, which is key to understanding the documents that I'll be talking about today. So for his doctoral dissertation, he's currently working on the uh, Spanish Inquisition in Cuba, the Greater Caribbean during the early 17th century. Leo uh, recently received a CRI a, a Cuban Studies Scholarship to uh, continue to work in Cuba, and I hope to share some juicy stories about his trip to the island last summer, as well as some of the interesting stories that he's learned about about nuns and, um, and priests and other uh, people in Cuba in the uh, uh, 17th century. Finally, I want to thank Leo for being one of the key persons who welcomed me personally to FIU several years ago. Uh, uh, recently, we had to discard the chair that he put together for me, uh, but, but I still have desk computer, so thank you for, for that. And also, finally, uh, as some of you uh, know that Leo uh, worked at the Kimberly Green Lab, Merkin and Caribbean Center for many years as a graduate assistant. Johnson. So please help me welcome Leo Paco. All right. Yes, I am nervous. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I talk, I'm, I always get nervous. So just deal with me. I will get better within uh, 30 seconds. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so um, the title of uh, my presentation, Manufacturing Sin, uh, Francisco Carranco and the Inquisition in Cuba, 1604-1614, um, describes basically what my research, my original research uh, uh, was about. Manufacturing uh, Sin was uh, 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 a title that uh, Dr. Sherry Johnson came up with, my mentor, uh, because she realized that, that uh, I was going to say fabricating or, or making up, but uh, you know, it was not too academic. So she liked the manufacturing sin, and you will see why we titled my, res my research this. Um, uh, let me just disclose something. This picture that you see here, this painting, if you have been to Cuba uh, and, and Floridita, where Hemingway used to have uh, his uh, diaries, that is the painting in the back of the bar. <laughs> so I stole it. <laughs> And, uh, and then I put some fire, you know, to make it seem like, you know, the Inquisition and things like that. Um, I want to thank the Cuban Research Institute, uh, not just because of uh, uh, my research for the dissertation, but also because of my research for my master's uh, thesis 2000-2002, I also was able to travel to Cuba because of the generosity of the Cuban Research Institute. So both of my main research have been sponsored uh, par, uh, par, by the Cuban Research Institute. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you for you know the hard work that you do in, in all things Cuban, you know, and, and, and bringing uh, uh, lectures like this together. Um, so let's just go into this. As you notice, I don't like to read my research because if I can read, so do you. So I'll just give you a copy of it, and that's it. Be done. I like to talk uh, a lot, <laughs> and uh, let me just start from the beginning. How did this research uh, start? Uh, as uh, uh, Duane said, uh, back uh, in Cuba in my other life, I was studying at the seminary uh, in Havana at San Carlos at San Ambrosio to be a Catholic priest. Uh, I was a Dominican friar, and you know, Dominicans and the Inquisition, it goes all together. And one of my professors uh, was uh, Monsignor uh, Carlos Manuel de Céspedes, uh, who everybody knows, and uh, Carlos was, uh, uh, he taught history, 
at uh, the seminary, but he, uh, became, we, he and I became very good friends. And uh, I was always very interested in the fact that nobody knew anything about the Inquisition in Cuba. And uh, I, I asked him one question. I actually have the, the, the interview taped. Uh, and uh, I asked him, you know, what about the Inquisition in Cuba? Because you talk about, you know, the early church and that there is this rumor within uh, the, 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 the historians of, of the church in Cuba and there is this rumor among the clergy that in the late 16th century uh, there was a, a case of the Inquisition uh, of 18 homosexuals, they call it amujerados. Uh, Fernando Ortiz is the one that uh, mentions this, but he does not give any uh, sources, that were burned in Havana. And people cite this as the first case of the Inquisition. You can imagine, you know, oh, this is, this is going to be really good. So I asked Carlos, and Carlos, he was very funny, very, he, he actually had a, a star, you know, he, <laughs> and uh, I asked him, and then he goes like, pause the interview for a second. And I go like, oh Lord. And then he goes like, that was not the church. If it happened, it was actually because these amujerados, he used another word that I'm not going to use <laughs> in Republic. <laughs> these amujerados had a male prostitute, you know, uh, a prostitute house. Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, next to the ladies' uh, uh, prostitute house, and they didn't like it. Uh, they complained. The civil authorities took these people, burned them, and then he used a bad word that I'm not going to use. And sas, desaparecieron los. You know the word that he used. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh my God, this is such an interesting uh, uh, story. I'm going to do this. So my original uh, intention was to research these four <laughs> homosexuals that were burned uh, by the Inquisition in Cuba. The problem was that I had no way of knowing uh, uh, where this case came from because Fernando Ortiz, which is, everybody knows Fernando Ortiz, Fernando Ortiz, uh, who wrote about everything Cuban, uh, cites the, the, this case, but he does not tell us where he got the information uh, from. It's in, in, in uh, Una Pelea, Cubana uh, Contra Demonio. Uh, so I search and search and search, and uh, after a year doing research, I realized, you know, this is going nowhere. I need to refocus on, on something uh, else. So that was the, the, the origin or the beginning of my, my story. I'm going to get back to the archives in a few minutes. Uh, so the question that everybody asked me, and the question you're, you know, you're here to find out is like, was there an inquisition in Cuba? Well, the answer is there was an inquisition in every place the Spanish Empire uh, was. So there was an inquisition in the Philippines, there was an inquisition everywhere. Now, the inquisition, as we think of it, you know, the fire, the burning, and everything, that's another type of inquisition. That's, that's the big tribunal, that's the big inquisition. There was an inquisition in Cuba that lasted until the inquisition was abolished, but it was not. You know, this big uh, auto affair, you know, where they took all these people and uh, into this plaza and they burned them. That is part of the black legend. It happened in many places. It did happen, but not as in, in many instances as historians and non-historians have actually uh, 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 said uh, before. So yes, there was an Inquisition. Uh, but the answer again depends on, on what we understand about the Inquisition or as Inquisition, what we expect to find in the archives of my fellow you know, history students are like, yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> and what actually you find in the archives. And this here is it's what's going to guide your final product. Because again, going back to my original idea, I went with the idea to find in Spain, you know, of course, because everybody goes to the AGI, and she went out the Indians in Seville. I went there, I tried to find my, my, my uh, 18 homosexuals. I spent several weeks there and found absolutely nothing undone. Uh, so it is actually, your research is guided, and your final product is guided by what you find in the archive. So back to the question, was there an inquisition in Cuba? Yes, what was the inquisition? The Inquisition was one of many institutions within the Catholic Church. Many. And 
Was there one inquisition? No, there were inquisitions everywhere. What is the inquisition? Uh, the inquisition is basically a trial. It is a questioning. It is just a procedure that it will change a little bit later with the, with the Spanish Empire, but it was basically uh, a trial, uh, um, and I have a medieval specialist here, <laughs> a trial uh, that people, you know, that the church used to, without, you know, the dissenting idea, the, the, the not orthodox uh, ideas. And if you look at my, my uh, slide here, I'd say it is within, within the Roman Catholic Church. That is the first mistake. People have the tendency to study the Inquisition as an, as an outside institution. No, you cannot study the Inquisition without studying the church. It is a, a very, very uh, important part of the Catholic Church. And then it is part of the Roman Catholic Church. Roman, because it is a Roman institution. It was used by the Roman Empire. You know, to find out, you know, the dissidents, to find out people that disagree with, with the empire. It is Catholic because the Catholic Church assumed, or, or I don't know what else, how else to put it, but basically the Catholic Church assumed the Roman Empire. So this Catholicity of, of, of the church, when it extends globally, the church, the Inquisition will expand with it. And church, because again, it is a very, it's an intrinsic part of the Catholic Church. Wherever the church went, there was an inquisition. Now, it is a judicial institution. The inquisition has these parameters that they have to follow. This is not just, okay, you're accused uh, with the inquisition, I'm taking you over there, I'm gonna burn you. No. <laughs> Actually, when you look at the, at the archives, the least, the least you find is gonna be <laughs> uh, burning people. You're gonna find like, Legajos and legajos and legajos of documents and complaints and oh my god, boring, boring stuff. So if you are here to you know to hear about burning people in Cuba, I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> the Inquisition, no, it was not that. They did burn people, but it was not what they did all the time. Actually, the Inquisition did not burn the people, the civil authorities did on behalf of the Inquisition because of course they were not going to commit that sin of killing by wrong, okay? So they gave into the civil authorities, you kill them. You go to hell, we're not gonna go to hell. <laughs> so I'm, I'm being very superficial on this because I don't want to bore you with all these details about canons and da 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 da. That is gonna be in my dissertation, which whoever wants to read it can read it later. <laughs> uh, so, uh, like I said, several inquisitions, the Roman inquisition, the, you, you name it. The one that we are used to, the one that got the most attention, the most popular one was the Spanish Inquisition. Why? Why do you think that is? And we say, you know, the Elizabethan period of, of, in, in, in history, you know, when the black legend, uh, all the drawings that were uh, done, uh, but also the Spanish Inquisition is famous because it was famous because it was different from the rest of the other inquisition. Because this thing here, I love that word, patronato regio. When I, no, no, when I teach about this, I'm, I'm actually, patron what? Patronato regio, is royal patronage. Basically, this will not be found in any other uh, empire that came to the United to, to the to the Americas. Only the Spanish Empire. Basically, the church was supported by the state. The state governed the church. The church worked for the state. The state worked for the church. And state and church in the Spanish Empire were one uh, indistinguishable uh, uh, apparatus. Let's put it like that. And the Inquisition, because the Inquisition is part of the church, it, it, it becomes part of the Spanish government. So that is one difference. The other, the other difference because of this is that the this church in the New World, in the Spanish possession, would be directly under the Spanish monarchs. First with Isabel and Fernando, and then all of their descendants. They ultimately respond to the Pope, because they're Catholic, and even the king and queen responded to the Pope. But they responded first, and sometimes only, to the Catholic monarchs. The Catholic monarchs were the ones that appointed bishops and appointed inquisitors and everybody else. 
and they dismiss cases and they approve cases and they establish the, the Supreme Council of the Inquisition, they run the show in the Americas. Also, it is different because it is a new world. This is no longer Europe. And this is extremely important because this goes uh, uh, together. Uh, the idea of the new world meant that a new type of Christianity of, or Catholicism uh, could be established among the, in the natives, among the virgin soils, souls about, uh, uh, around the people that had never been exposed. So this idea of millennialism has to do with apocalyptic visions. You know, it is the end of the world. It is a new world. And that vision is going to be transferred to the new world with the Franciscan friars. And by the way, today is St. Francis Day. I'm talking about a Franciscan friar. Uh, with the Franciscan friars to the new world. So the Franciscan friars that start the Inquisition in the new world, especially in Mexico, will be part of this movement. This is the end of the world. This is the new world. We are going to establish a new type of Christianity. So they are going to be very. Uh, 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 zealous, is that the word? Um, and uh, they're going to go beyond their call of duty to, to find uh, uh, heretics, which is a, a very interesting word. Uh, but that's going to be very, very different in, in the new world. The kind of church and therefore the kind of inquisition that is going to uh, uh, travel to the, to, to the new world. Uh, and I have to go through all this quickly because I want to give you the cases that I found, but I have to get rid of this first. Uh, the archives. <laughs> I have gone through all these archives. I have traveled a lot, thank you to Tinker, and to, to CRI, to my pocket, uh, to <laughs> FAFSA. <laughs> so I'm in Denver for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm, I still need to go to um, uh, the Archbishop's uh, archives in Cuba again. Uh, I have to go to the archives in Puebla. Uh, because uh, uh, when, when the Archivo, Historico, uh, Archivo General de la Nación in Mexico was established, the Bishop of Puebla said, we are not taking my records. And my guy, the, guy, you know, the Carranco guy, uh, he was in Veracruz, and Veracruz were, was under Puebla as, a, as, a, as, a, as an archbishop. Uh, I need to go back to Sevilla. And then Colombia, I want to check uh, the archives uh, in, in Bogotá because the archives in Cartagena burned out, so there, there's no Inquisition uh, records in Cartagena. And of course, I want to go back to the Vatican because when I went, uh, they did not let me in. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you are not going in. Uh, I, I like this. This is actually the seal of the Inquisition. The Inquisition was feared. This, this, there's no doubt about it. People were afraid of the Inquisition because it was awful. What they did to people was awful. Again, in Cuba, that's another story. There was an Inquisition, but it was not that old. I thought the Inquisition is coming. And the Inquisition, you know, the Mel Brooks. <laughs> uh, so I like to have this here. And that's basically what it says here. Arise, O Lord, and judge to your cause. That's a song, but that was actually used in a papal pool in 1520 during the trial of 1441 uh, uh, Lutherans. Heretics, Lutherans, Protestants become a target of the Inquisition in the New World because only Catholics could travel to the New World. Okay? Only Catholics. Of course, all you have to do is I'm a Catholic. Okay, good. Uh, so the fact that there were a lot of, of uh, Protestants in the New World and known uh, Christians too, like Muslims and, and, and uh, Jews or conversos, uh, that they would be secondary, but the, the main point, would, the main target would be the Lutheran. And that's just the cover of the, the bowl because I like it. It's just beautiful. Uh, here, the map of, uh, of the Caribbean, I want to point out that uh, I'm talking about Cuba as a diocese, not as a country. There was no country of Cuba. In, in, in the 17th century. It was all the Spanish Empire. Uh, so I'm talking about the Diocese of Cuba, which is, at, at, at the time that I'm talking about, it was in Augustine, Havana, and Jamaica. All right? So that was the Diocese of Cuba. Problems with the literature, I'm going to fly through this. People have basically dismissed the Inquisition in Cuba. Why? Because the, the archives 
are not, uh, you will not find everything in one archive. Again, that's why I went to Chile, because the guy that wrote most about the Inquisition was from Chile, Toribio Medina. Uh, he borrowed, stole, a lot of the records from Colombia, Mexico, uh, and uh, Peru, and took them to Chile. And uh, when he donated the library in, 20, in 1925, uh, they actually took literally his library with lamps and everything and took it to the Biblioteca Nacional de Santiago de Chile and they are still there, they are not cataloged or anything like that. So I couldn't find much uh, there. Uh, there, are, there is not a single academic work on the Inquisition in Cuba, period. I will say the most comprehensive uh, uh, article on the Inquisition, which is online, will be with Henry Alonso, who actually uh, that studied with me and, uh, and uh, Uba and one of the Uba's classes, uh, and his name, uh, the name of the article is Moinas of the, of the Inquisition, and uh, Eugenio did a very good job uh, listing, you know, the different uh, cases, the different people that were involved. But again, it's an article that he published uh, for the Kislak Foundation, uh, but it's not an academic, uh, comprehensive uh, work on the Inquisition. But his is one of those. Uh, Tania Chapi, uh, she's a uh, reporter from Cuba, a uh, contemporary reporter. She wrote this little book, little like this. Uh, uh, it's about 100 pages, and you can see how, how uh, small it is, uh, about the Inquisition in Cuba. Uh, it only mentions five cases. Uh, one of them is the case of the, of the 18 uh, homosexual. And then, of course, Fernando Ortiz. But Fernando T says this is not a history of the Inquisition, this is a folk study, this is a folkloric study of the Inquisition and its, its interaction, but it's much later than my time period. Um, and then, of course, I'm not going to mention any names because I respect uh, 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 historians, but the Inquisition has been dismissed by many famous uh, uh, Cuban historians as insignificant, weak, or uh, uh, I can't remember, limited. <laughs> was the other word that, that they used. Okay, big problem with the Inquisition and the, the study of the Inquisition and the study of the church in Cuba. People compare the church in Cuba with the church in the rest of Latin America. Do you see the problem here? <laughs> Apples and oranges. You can't compare the church of this diocese with this, especially with Mexico. Why people compare the church in Cuba with the church in Mexico? Because the church in Cuba was under the church in Mexico, even though Cubans don't like to, to recognize that. We were under Mexico for many, many years until after the Bourbon reform. So get it? It's there. Uh, so, but people make that uh, uh, mistake, and you can compare uh, these two. Now, people say, I went to the archives, and I didn't find anything. Well, you didn't find anything because you ran a search or you just went through the cards and you found one, maybe one case. The problem is that the cases are there, but they are not organized. Uh, and the, uh, my first trip to the Archivo uh, General de la Nación in Mexico, I found more than uh, 300 hits on the Inquisition in Cuba. You have to spell it. Uh, uh, Havana uh, with two N, with B, without the H, uh, Cuba with a V. I mean, you have to play uh, around it and then start finding cases. Uh, but when I ran my first search, I realized that out of the 300 cases, 200, and I'm saying cases, and I will define that in a few minutes, 200 of those correspond to this period right here. Cuban historians or people who know Cuban history, history know that this is a significant time uh, for Cuba uh, because uh, uh, Havana uh, and Santiago are split into two separate governments. Uh, and six, that I'll talk about in a second. 1607, American historians, what happened in 1607? The establishment of Jamestown, right above St. Augustine. Uh, and then also there were a lot of rescates you know, during this time. And uh, this is the time where the first Cuban poem was written, Espejo de Paciencia. My guy was involved in this. <laughs> and the bishop that he gets in trouble with was involved, is it? One, uh, the, one de las cabezas de Altamira. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was the clue. And uh, I said, OK, this is what I need to look at. I need to look at this period. I need to look at what happened here that we have so many cases of the, uh, of the Inquisition in Cuba. 
And the name that kept popping, you know, in all of my documents was Francisco Carranco. Okay, I started running Carranco, and then I started getting cases, cases, cases. And uh, one of the cases I found, uh, which everybody loves, was this one. This was the first case I found. I'm going to read a little bit of Spanish, Bob. <laughs> Sorry for that, those who don't speak Spanish. Uh, but what got my attention was this line. It says, Casose siendo monja profesa. She got married being a professor. No. And I'm like, Mons, nuns don't get married. And then I was like, let me go back to my theology studies and canon studies. And then I realized that that's not a crime. Uh, so I started like, OK, let me read this. And then, su señoría sabrá que en la flota de la Nueva España, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to brag about my choreography uh, skills. <laughs> because it took me a whole year to learn this. But here, Carranco talks about this woman that he arrested, uh, number one hit. He can arrest anybody, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. He arrested or he detained uh, for being identified as a nun from Seville, from Sevilla, uh, who had moved to Tabasco, Mexico, uh, got married there, uh, then was running away from her husband because her husband was, quote, un loco y un bellaco. <laughs> uh, she was running away from, and that, that bellaco is, uh, sorry, I forget the word. Yeah. Uh, she's running away from this guy now, back to Spain, and then in the transition from Veracruz to Havana, she gets identified. Oh, you are that nun from, you know, el convento de uh, madre, de, no, um, de la pasión in Sevilla. I mean, what are the odds of this? But the guy that actually discovered her was a very famous general, you know, Chavez Galindo, and then he takes her to this guy that all of a sudden is running the Inquisition in Cuba. Who is this guy? Up until 1604, there was no commissary of the Inquisition in Cuba. Up until that time, the Inquisition was run by the bishop. The bishop of the diocese has all the powers of all the sacraments, of all everything. He, they're like almost God. And one of the titles is Ordinary Inquisitor. So you can say that the Inquisition, the, the Inquisition with the big I, in Cuba, starts with Francisco Carranco. He is the first person who is officially assigned by the Inquisition Tribunal in Mexico, which had jurisdiction over Cuba, to run the Inquisition in Cuba. I'll tell you more about the nun later. Uh, <laughs> because it was a two year battle, that it was really good. Uh, so, this is what basically <laughs> I came up with. My thesis is like, okay, why is this guy writing? All of a sudden, we have so many heretics in Cuba, we have so many cases of the Inquisition. What's going on? So, you know, months and months and months after reading and reading and reading, I realized, okay, this is what this guy wants. At this point in 1604, 1605, there are only two tribunals of the Inquisition in the New World. Anybody? Lima and Mexico, right? I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Lima and Mexico. There was a, a, a decree in, 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 uh, in uh, 15, 1569 by Philip II that said, OK, now we need the Inquisition in the New World. Up until that time, the Inquisition had been run by the bishops or by the Franciscan friars who had the power to run the Inquisition because in 1522, they got a uh, What was the document that the Pope signed? Uh, so these were the documents. I mean, these this were the, the two uh, tribunals. Lima, all of South America, Mexico, all of the rest, all the way to the Philippines. OK? So they, were, they had a huge, huge territory. At the time that Carranco gets to Cuba, there were discussions about a third tribunal. He knew about it. Carranco was not an uneducated person. I'll talk about Carranco in a second, uh, his studies and everything. He knew that something was coming. He knew about the discussions in the Council of the Indies and letters from the local bishops requesting you know, more Inquisition personnel. So the moment he hits Havana, the first letter that he writes, to the tribunal in Mexico, I need more Inquisition personnel because there are too many heretics in Havana. This is a port. 
uh, with lots of Protestants or heretics, and uh, we need more inquisition. I need familiares, which is the, the chivatos. <laughs> Some people are actually go wow, and, uh, and, oh yeah, it goes back. <laughs> Chivato means the person that tells on other people. Uh, what would be the translation of that in English? Informants. Informants is too nice. <laughs> 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 So he needed, he needed more familiares than he needed. He needed uh, secretaries. That is like, hold your horses. You just got there. No, he wanted to make a case. We need Inquisition people here. We need a tribunal. And, and one of his letters he finally will say, we need a tribunal uh, uh, in Havana. I again wanted to see, to show you the diocese of Cuba. Uh, and then, uh, Francisco Carranco becomes, you know, the talk of town. Uh, Carranco is from a town, Carranco has been mentioned in many books, in many articles, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Carranco is known uh, for, uh, by the people that started the Inquisition in Mexico and the Caribbean, Martin Nesbitt from UM has uh, included uh, his information in, the, uh, in his uh, book about the Inquisition. And when I talked to Netflix, he said, finally, somebody is going to write about this guy. He is too important not to write about him. So this is going to be a long a process, you know, but I'm writing about the guy. Calrenco was born, according to the documents I have found, scattered. I found the documents about Carranco in, uh, in 1804, 200 years later because the documents are moved and they don't always put them back where they belong. He was born in Guadalcanal, which is in the north of Seville. Um, he, comes, he becomes a, a Franciscan friar in Guadalcanal. Interesting, the convent, or the, the, we call it convent in Spanish, convento for men and women. The convent that he enters was a reformed convent of uh, a strict observancia, meaning this, these Franciscans were very strict in, in following the rule of St. Francis. Uh, and they were also known for being millennials, you know, all these apocalyptic visions and visions. And I just found a book about this foundation talking about these visions and God and angels. And Carranco comes from that convent. In 1580, I found a document that has Carranco in Santo Domingo, getting ready to transfer to Veracruz. And then in 1594, I have a document uh, talking about Carranco's nomination to be a commissary of the Inquisition. What is a commissary of the Inquisition? Basically, it's a priest, a high-ranking priest that is not paid for being uh, for working with the Inquisition. That is also a big uh, what is this, niche? Yes. <laughs> uh, basically, these are inquisitors wannabe. <laughs> these are people that had a lot of power because they were the eyes or hands of the inquisitors. When the tribunal. You saw the size of, the, of the, the territory. The tribunals did not have access to the entire territory. So they will send the commissaries out. Okay, you go find the heretics and bring them in. So Carranco, uh, by 1594, Carranco is already a commissary of the Inquisition in Veracruz. Uh, I have to talk about this because uh, Carranco was really strict. Uh, and there is a, a letter I found where Carranco is trying to stop the Antichrist for entering the new world. According to Carranco, he had been born somewhere in the Lebanon or somewhere in there of a woman uh, the, with beautiful eyes. And he was going to stop the Antichrist from coming into Veracruz, you know, because the new world is not going to be affected by this Antichrist. And Carranco also had the first five copies of El Quixote in his hands when the first, when they first arrived in the new world. And he was going to throw him. Overboard, but somebody convinced him, no, 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 this is a new guy, you know, that's writing this, and it's a cool adventure, blah, blah, blah. so he was actually going to throw those into the water. So Carranco was, was some. Uh, and then by 1604, uh, Carranco is transferred to Havana. Again, first commissary of the Inquisition in Cuba. Before that, the bishops were running the Inquisition, and anybody uh, could be transferred to Mexico or to Sevilla. Even though Cuba was under Mexico, Cubans didn't like that, so they sent people directly to Sevilla. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, and then he gets to Havana, and the first problem he has is with the bishop. Our bishop, the Juan de las Cabezas Altamirano, a Dominican friar, very well known, professor of theology from Salamanca, 
uh, uh, he had been the provincial of the Dominicans in, the, in Santo Domingo, very well known uh, uh, theologian. Uh, he writes a letter complaining that this guy wants to take his power away. <coughs> People have written about this. So my dissertation only touches on it, and you can find information about it because it's very well known. Uh, it's actually in Espejo de Paciencia. They, they talk about that. Uh, but that's the first fight they have. Now, Carranco knows that he can't fight the bishop. The bishop is above him. So he says, OK, I need to start finding people that are not the bishop, but that are, they call it visible people, people famous. Because if I send a case of somebody famous to the tribunal in Mexico, he's going to get their attention. My name is going to be recognized. OK, he's the guy, this is the guy that found these cases. So he accused the governor of Florida. <laughs> he accused the assistant to the governor of Florida of something that I'm still looking for, but it looks like there's some sexual issue with the assistant governor and a French guy. He wants to link you know, uh, the, he's accused to non-Catholics. He calls this Huguenot, you know, which is a, a type of a Protestant. Uh, he accused him. He accuses the uh, provisor, which is the associate to the bishop in Havana, Luis de Salas. Uh, he accused everybody and their grandparents. I mean, he accused, 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 accused. The letters are like, he wrote, one day he has 16 letters. April 6th, 6th I think it is. 16 letters to the, to the tribunal in Mexico. What is he trying to do? Again, he's trying to get his name recognized because once they say the tribunal is going to be in Havana because Havana is extremely important and this diocese is very important because we have, you know, Je you know we're going to have Jamestown and the other. Uh, when my name is there and I have this, uh, this uh, uh, reputation, they're going to make me. The, the, the inquisitor. The inquisitors make a lot of money. He didn't make any money as a commissary of the inquisition, uh, but it was also a stepping stone for becoming an archbishop or becoming, you know, uh, uh, the head of a big, big diocese like Mexico. Most inquisitors from Mexico became the archbishop of Mexico. So, inquisitor, archbishop, Carranco. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carranco. He needed cases. He needed, he needed a case that will be some that, that will be out of the ordinary. And and he he couldn't make sins up. You can't. You can't just make, you know, kind of law, uh, you know, the church was three years, uh, uh, you know, writing canons, uh, but I need something that is going to catch these people's attention. Uh, the governor of Florida didn't catch their attention because he was the governor of Florida. The bishop, I'll deal with you later. And then he finds this poor Magdalena de Cárdenas, which is the nun that I was talking about. They actually delivered the nun to the nun, to uh, uh, Carranco, who actually says, OK, this is going to be the case. He writes immediately to the, to the Inquisition in Mexico, I have this nun that ran away from the convent, and I have her here, and I, ha I don't have a place uh, to put her because there is not a vecino decente in La Habana. <laughs> to keep her, uh, there was a decent neighbor, you know, a good neighbor in Havana that would keep her. The nuns, the Dominican nuns, because supposedly she had been a Dominican nun in Sevilla, the Dominican nuns in Havana did not want to take her because they didn't know if it was a nun or not. The vecinos didn't want to take her because, okay, this married nun, and then what do I do with her? The problem was Carranco didn't know how rich this woman was. And this woman, who had in Spanish was a ayayas, she was a woman, you know. <laughs> I mean, she had run from a convent, married, run away from. She was not going to let Carranco win. So she hired a lawyer in Spain, in Sevilla, to go in front of the Supreme Tribunal of the Inquisition to the Archbishop of Seville to plead her case. Somewhere in there, there is a letter she writes the nuns of the convent telling them, please do not say that I am the runaway nun. Because I have the letters where the nun say, oh, no, 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 she was not the nun. She was not the nun. She was never here. That woman was never here. <laughs> they interviewed the mother. Oh, no, she was never a nun. No, 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 she, no, no, she just married and went to the new world. And, but then they interviewed this old priest, Morfang. He was 74 years old, who had been the confessor of the convent for 15 years, who said that, no, there was nobody ever there named Magdalena, but I had a niece 
named Catalina, that's why I have the question mark here, named Catalina, that I haven't, that was known there, and I haven't seen for a long time. And uh, I think, you know, I don't know what happened to her. Well, Catalina was the name she gave when she was traveling from Mexico to Havana. And people in the ship, about the ship, they said, this is Catalina, this is La Monja, que se escapó del convento. This is the runaway known. She was very famous in Seville, okay? And, and so I have all these documents and documents, you know, that I found in 1806. This is 1606. I found the cases in, in 1806 that I was trying to tell you, do not give up. Just keep chismoseando. I found the, the, all the stuff, but much, much later. Uh, she, she, uh, um, anyway, uh, I, I lost my, my turn of mind, friend of thought. Uh, anyway, uh, Magdalena fights, uh, or Catalina, whatever you want to call it, uh, fights the case, and uh, then she's not going anywhere because the Inquisition Tribunal is too far. They skipped Mexico because she went straight to the tribunal in Seville, which is very, very interesting. Cubans don't like to be, no, they want to go to the king directly. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she's, they skipped the tribunal in Mexico. She actually goes straight to the governor of Cuba and tells him, okay, I am not this done. I need to get out of here because my mother is very sick. I need to go back to my marital uh, duties as a woman. Blah, 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 blah. She spends 2,000 uh, ducados. Duc That's a lot of money in 1606. And then the governor gets angry at Carranco and tells Carranco, you need to let that woman go. She is no nun. They knew it was a nun. Uh, <laughs> she's no nun. And you, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a powerful people. That's just, when you made, you, she, he made a mistake. He didn't think that she was that rich or powerful or that was so uh, uh, valiant, so, so brave you know, to fight the Inquisition. So that's one of my chapters in, in, in the book. Uh, how are we doing time work? Okay, uh, so the non thing didn't work out. So he turned back to the, the bishop. And then he starts a fight with the bishop. This one is really cool. Uh, he, he couldn't arrest the bishop. I mean, he would have been killed. Uh, uh, he uses the, the bishop goes to visit Jamaica. And then he goes on and asks the civil authorities to arrest his provisor, his assistant, and at night in a canoe, and this is like a novel, like a soap opera, you know, I'm reading really the document, oh my god. <laughs> he actually has these people arrested, which he couldn't do, a commissary cannot arrest people, the alguacil, which is the, like the sheriff, you know, is the one that can do it, but when they didn't have that in Cuba. But he arrested these people, puts them in this canoe, and takes them out into the ship, and then sends them to Spain. Imagine. When this guy comes back, he is furious. Not only because his provisor had been arrested, but this guy had just gone through several months of being taken captive by pirates. If you read Espejo de Paciencia, you know, it's about this. It's about Altamirano being taken by this pirate, this French pirate, and then in Bayamo, and it was the first poem ever written in Cuba, by Silvestre Balboa, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Silvestre Balboa actually became uh, a, uh, a familiar de la Inquisición later. Right. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be wanted a piece of the Inquisition. And then uh, he was taken, and then the people from Bayamo had to pay. They didn't pay because people, some black uh, former slave saved him. Uh, the people from Bayamo had to pay the So anyway. One, uh, Cabeza de Camerano had no paciencia with the, with, the, with, the, <laughs> with the Inquisitor. He writes this nasty letter. Uh, never mind that his first letter was praising Carranco. This one is like, this guy is out of control. This guy has uh, uh, usurped my powers. This guy, I don't even know who he is. And he has to go to prison. So he actually asked the Inquisition in Mexico to put Carranco in prison. But Carranco was actually an official of the Inquisition. So he could not be arrested that easily. Um, Altamirano was, was angry. He sends this huge letter to the tribunal, which I have in, uh, um, in Mexico, saying, okay, this guy has no jurisdiction over me. So there is a huge battle about jurisdiction that people have mentioned uh, before. The, the important thing about uh, this, this uh, uh, fight is, is that, that it gets established that the Inquisition is not above the office of the bishop. 
it is established, but they have the power to investigate, you know, the associates, the bishops associates, but not the bishop. There was only one case in Spain, and that's another uh, story. Anyway, because La, uh, Altamirano is from the big families in Spain, he writes a letter to the king, at this point it's Philip III, Philip III was not Philip II. Philip II was a religious man, okay? He hated our friend Elizabeth I from England, right? <laughs> they hated each other because they were Protestant and Catholic, but Elizabeth was dead, Philip II was dead, we have James I in, 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 in England, and then you have Philip III in Spain. Imagine when Philip II was dying, he said, God who has given me so many kingdoms has not given me a good son to, to Govern them. <laughs> that was like a dying, you know. <laughs> and he was actually friends with James the first, because there, there is a, a, actually this pact that this peace uh, agreement that they signed, and and it's like no people just leave, just stay, come down Inquisition. He actually tries to abolish the Inquisition and everything, but you know this is too important. By 1607, Jamestown is founded. Jamestown is established. This is the second time Protestant, the first time was the Huguenots. Uh, now you have these people uh, that are really Protestants that are right very close to St. Augustine. We cannot let go of St. Augustine. Uh, Carranco gets involved in that too, you know, and he writes the, the, the king, no, please don't let go. Uh, so the, the fight is put in a second, uh, like a back burner, because they want to focus more on how to prevent the, the, the Protestant form from coming into, officially, into the Spanish kingdom. Uh, so how do they deal with this? And I'm gonna end with this, uh, because I want questions. Uh, they kick poor Altamirano, I love that guy. Altamirano out of Cuba, they name him Bishop of Guatemala. Uh, he goes to Guatemala, you know, and uh, then they made him Bishop of Peru. He didn't make it to Peru because he died in, in 1615. Uh, but uh, uh, he's buried in Guatemala. They take, they send a, a letter saying this woman needs to get back to her husband in Veracruz. I mean, they're cleaning the house. We need to focus on something else. Just leave this alone. And then uh, Frank Carranco, the last letter I have from him is in 1610. Uh, 1610, there is a new tribunal established in the new world. And when he gets the letter, he's like, yes, I made it. No, the tribunal was in Cartagena, the Indians, <laughs> today, Colombia. Uh, the last letter I got from him was him complaining about the Inquisition being in, uh, in Cartagena and then saying that uh, I know that I have been recalled back to Veracruz, but I am so poor that I don't even have a toldillo or an umbrella to cover myself with the rain. I don't have money to travel, da 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 so, uh, And then he disappears from the record. I just found a book that might give me a clue where he went, but uh, it's really, really interesting. I went to Veracruz uh, trying to find Magdalena. I don't think Magdalena was her real name. Uh, so she also gets lost in the, in the, in the, in the records. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, the chapter is, is, is gonna be nice because it's, this woman tried to, to find her freedom in the new world, you know, and, and she actually gets entangled with the Inquisition. She's soft, she suffered. I have another letter where she was actually uh, complaining about being mistreated. I mean, it, this is it's a sad case. And then, uh, we have another case that I told uh, earlier to uh, Duani, but I don't have time because I want uh, to open the floor. Uh, I wanted to show you, <laughs> this is the, 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 uh, how the, the structure of the Inquisition, this is what, what Carranco wanted to be, uh, at least here. Well, this is what Carranco was, uh, he. <laughs> I mean, he was, none of these people were paid, and most of these people were actually lay people, they were not priests. So Carranco was below them. His brother was a familiar of the Inquisition in, in, in Puebla, who was above him. So that's why he, hey, I want to go back, up, 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 up. But uh, I don't think he made it. Uh, and then finally we have, the, these are the only three tribunals uh, that were established in the new world. There was an, a bull issued by uh, Philip III uh, is ordering the establishment of a tribunal in Santo Domingo in 1608, two years before Cartagena, and that's where uh, uh, Carranco thought, okay, I made it. It's, it's not gonna be Santo Domingo, it's gonna be Cuba. But they just, you know, they never, they never do it. And uh, uh, 
uh, the Tribunal is established in 1610 in, in Cartagena. It, they don't start often until 1614 with money from a case from Cuba, a converso that they actually uh, uh, arrested and tried, and they took all of his money. And with that money, the tribunal is started uh, in Cartagena. My last uh, uh, trip to Cuba, I found that there was other, there were other uh, uh, issues with the Inquisition in Cuba, other uh, uh, trials that were sent to Seville. Uh, but the Inquisition, the commissary, the office, of, the office of the commissary of the Inquisition remained in Cuba until it was abolished later after Napoleon. Uh, uh, Napoleon is everywhere. Uh, <laughs> um, and it was a very well respected person uh, uh, in, the, in the hierarchy of the church. He was always either a Franciscan or a Dominican friar. Uh, that's why in Havana you have Calle del Inquisidor. I mean, and, and they have, they have, uh, they had trials that they, or semi-trials that they run, uh, but I'm not there yet with my research. My research is just during this time because I have to write my dissertation and get on and find a job and then write a book, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you do it? <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much for listening to my crazy talk. <laughs>